Hello and welcome to Learn Synthesis with Pure Data, Series 1, Episode 12. This is the concluding episode for this first series, which is basically a Fundamentals of Synthesis and Pure Data series, where we've been building a fairly simple modular synthesizer. And in this episode, we're going to finish it off by giving it a little bit of a nicer look. How about that? So anyway, it's been a bit since I did the 11th episode, but, um, you know, life calls in my teaching day job sort of thing. Um, you know, it took some time away, had to create some new classes and all that, but we're going to finish this off. And yes, there will be a series two. And um, it looks like series two, I'm going to start off with uh, polyphony and how to add uh, uh, polyphony to a synthesizer. That was a request from a uh, viewer. And so I want to start off with that. And then we'll see how series two unfolds. I think maybe it will be creating a polyphonic synthesizer. Um, and um, because it'll be series two, it should be a little bit more advanced. So I am going to probably, I'm thinking about what kind of synthesizer I'm going to make. Definitely, I'm going to show how to do polyphony early on. Uh, and then I think um, what I want to do is have a little bit of an adventure in making kind of like a cool sounding synthesizer that I really want to use rather than just being a teaching tool um, sort of uh, series, although you're going to learn from it, definitely. But uh, I want to be adventurous in making stuff and, uh, and uh, you know, maybe the whole series will be on making one thing or it'll be uh, making different elements of the uh, overall thing that I'm building. We'll see what happens, but polyphony is definitely one of the things that I want to put in that. And if there's uh, any other things that people are interested in, you know, please feel free to comment on any of the episodes about stuff you'd like to see. Um, and um, we'll see if I can work that in somehow as we go on in this unending adventure into synthesis and your data. Okay, so that being said, um, what I'm gonna do now is go to the synthesizer and show you. Okay, so basically um, what I've done is already a lot of what I, want to talk about in this episode. What are some techniques for making things look a little bit nicer in pure data? Let me hear, let me see. Yep, there we go. You know, I loaded the patch, but there, you see, I play it, all the displays light up and everything, we hear sound. And basically a simple sine wave to start with. I'd actually have to put some settings in and stuff like that to get different sounds, but we've been through that. What's new here is really the um, the look. And I went for something that is a little bit uh, old school, you know, kind of like a gray metallic background. And uh, I made dark gray sliders uh, with the foreground of the uh, sliders, um, <laughs> the actual sliding pit of the slider. Um, it is the same color as this kind of gray background and then any of the number boxes and the um, tables I made green as kind of like a green background LED type of display kind of look. Now I left one module undone, uh, which is where I'll show you the things that I've done. Rather than doing each and every one for you, I thought I'd save some time so you could see, you know, what I did to give it this look and then, um, you know, talk about the things. One thing I will note here is when you have this, where the um, sub patch, you know, all these modules are sub patches and they have names. Like when you create them, you type, you make an object, you type PD space and a name for the sub patch. Um, 
I have it set to display these. But I had to take it out of this one because the display of the name made it wider than what the width of this, uh, you know, mixer slider, the mixing slider is supposed to be, you know, it made it longer. So I took it out. So that's one thing to kind of like when you're designing the look of your modules or different things in pure data, any of your sub patches, you know, that name appears in the upper left hand corner on the outside. But you can always turn that off by right clicking on the background, which is called the background canvas. You hit properties and here, if you check this off, it'll hide the name. And that means that if you made something that is more narrow than the length of the name, the name won't overstretch it wider than you want it to be. And if you don't want the name to appear, it won't appear then. Um, but one thing I found is when I put these background colors, these are also called canvases, but you see how I have a canvas on these modules here. When I put that down, it covered up the name also. So for anything where, you know, the name was still appearing, this covers it up, but it didn't really work well for this one because the name of the sub patch made it stretch wider than it was. And so, I took it out there. So it, it depends if you, if you want to take these out or not. I don't need to hide it here because it will be hidden in just a moment. So anyway, we know in pure data, when you click on the background, you're clicking on what's called the canvas. Um, but there are other canvases that you can put in to make backgrounds for things. Let me show you, for example, it's in the put menu under canvas and the shortcut is, um, Control Shift C in Windows, Command Shift C in Mac. And there we go, we have a canvas. In this upper left hand corner where you have the highlighted square, if you ever lose it, you just click in the upper left hand corner and it'll highlight, or you can select and it'll highlight. This is what you right click on to go to the properties of this canvas. And the main properties you'll be working with is like, what's its size, width and height? They're basically going to be four-sided rectangles, squares, that sort of thing. And um, you can set your width and height in pixels and uh, so forth. Now, let me show you one thing though. If you make your canvas after you bait other objects in the patch, it will appear on top of it. Now, if we wanted to make a background color here for this uh, module, like the others, can't do it like this because this is on top of it. So let me show you how you get around that. Basically, anytime you make objects or things in pure data, it will appear in the order and things that you made most recently will appear on top of other things. But here's a way around that, like especially if you want to put backgrounds in. And I'm going to make a background for the module itself and for the uh, table here. So what I'm gonna do is select all, Control A, Command A and Mac, and I'm gonna hit Control X, Command X and Mac, which is a shortcut for cut, which you can also find in the edit menu here. You know, your standard cut, copy, paste controls. And basically whatever I have here in Windows, it'll be Command that in Mac. Or you could go to the edit menu, menu to remind yourself of the shortcuts. But now I'm going to hit Control Shift C to make a canvas, and then a Control Shift C again to make a second canvas. Now I'm going to hit Control V, and it'll paste right back into place everything that I had just cut. So in between that, you don't want to do any copying or cutting because your buffer or the memory um will then have that new stuff you selected and cut or copied in it and you'll lose everything that was there um so the whole idea is you want to select all cut it put in your canvases and then paste it right back in so you don't lose anything but now that these canvases were created and i pasted everything on top of it they can be background and so what I'm going to do here is look at what the size of this is. Um, I had it memorized because most of these modules were the same. 
I think it was 170 by 260. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do here with the properties of this canvas. Since you see this red rectangle, which says this is the area that gets graphed on the parent, it also appears on the outside as like a black single pixel wide border around the whole subpatch. <clears throat> because that's there, I'm going to make the width instead of 170, 168, which is two less than 170. That accounts for the one pixel wide border here and the one pixel wide border here. So this will be um, just smaller. It'll basically cover the whole background area here, except not overlap the border. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. The height is 260, so I'm going to make it 258 for the canvas. And then I'm going to make it, this is the color I've been making them. Keep it uniform there. And we press OK. And we could slide this right on in there. But I'm going to zoom in and make sure I got this lined up right. So it fits just in. So you see, it's just inside the red border that outlines. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is the same thing here with this table. We're going to put this other canvas behind it. Now, since this was the second of the two canvases I made, this will overlap the one before, the one I just put into place. But it'll be behind, be behind everything else because I remember I cut them, made the canvases, and then pasted this. So the first canvas was made, second canvas was made, everything pasted on top. This will be basically behind everything except for the first canvas I made. It all has to do with order of how things were made or pasted in. If you want to change the order from back to front of what things cover up other things. Um, let me just check what the size of this table is because I'm going to make a canvas that is the size of the table minus two. See, it's 140 by 80. But as you see, the uh, table or array has a one pixel wide border around it. So if, it, if we want the width to fit in here, instead of 140, we make it 138. And instead of it being 80 tall, we make it 78. So 138 by 78. Properties, let's see here, 138 by 78. And I've been using this green here. Incidentally, you know, you have options here, like what am I colorizing, the background? Or do I want to colorize the label, which will be this title of it here? And those are the only options for the table. Other things have multiple options. For the canvases, it's pretty much their background. And I think there is a label color, too, for canvases as well. Well, yeah, this is a canvas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the canvas we're dealing with here. But we're not going to have a label for it because we don't need any text for the canvas itself. It is just a background. That's how we're using it. But, uh, sorry, I was talking about this table here, and actually, no, you can't change the colors on this. There's no properties for colors in arrays slash tables. Excuse me, I misspoke. All right. Misspoke sounds like a politician. No, I just was wrong. I was lost in what I was talking about. Okay, so anyway, we put in the green background here that I want for this. Put it right in there like that. There we go. So now our table, you know, the graphic is appearing on top, and we have a background. So that's what I was doing with that. Um, these sliders can also be colorized by going to their properties. And um, what I've been doing is making them this dark gray background. 
And then I click this thing that's called the front, which is the actual little slider thing, which right now is appearing as black. I'm going to make that the same gray as the background. And voila, we have this coloration for the slider. I'm going to do that as the same for all of these. Now, when you're building a synthesizer, what we focused on were concepts and everything, and I wasn't colorizing things to begin with. If I was colorizing them to begin with, then when I copied and pasted things, you know, a lot of this stuff would have been done already. Um, you know, if you wanted uniform colors in your different modules. But, uh, oops, I didn't colorize the front there. That's why it's still appearing as black. Uh, there we go. So, um, you know, but it's not that hard to just colorize things afterwards. You know what I mean? This, this process didn't take me that long, even though I was doing each module separately. It didn't take me that long to do it. As you see right there, we've just about finished this module. Um, another thing is, like, if we click this square, I could put a label here for this module. Just like in other objects, and I think we've talked about some of these label properties in the past. This module is called ADSR2, so I'm going to name it that. You can um, change the X and Y offsets of where the label appears. Uh, pretty much it's set to default up here, right about here. I, I've been doing these in the same X and Y settings. 17 pixels, X means 17 pixels from the left hand corner, the left hand top corner, 17 pixels horizontally. And Y, I'm going to make that, I think I've been making these 10. Let's look at it and see and compare them to the others. So that's where it appeared. The Y is how far from the label position is typically up here. Zero would have the bottom of the, the typing of the label like appearing right here on the top border. By making it 10, even though it is positive 10, it actually means down uh, when doing the Y axis of the label. And so it basically put it down right here inside the uh, module so let me make sure that that's what i did with the rest yep you see now this module is uniform with the others now uh in some of these other modules that had number boxes um it's pretty easy to do that for example i'll open up one since i used the number two box which is in the put menu here uh up oh. Here, right? There's number box. And no, it's down here, number two box. That's the second variety of number boxes. These allow you to actually colorize it. So since these are number two boxes, you actually have the options to colorize. The regular generic number boxes don't have color options. But here you have your background. I could change the, uh, the color of what's called front which would mean the text inside the box, the actual numbers, how that looks. I say text, but it's a number, you know, number display. You know, the inside of the box would look like that. Um, as well as I think the border outline, for example, if I did say I want it to be white, for example, do that. Oh, I was selecting background, sorry. Background, green. And if I wanted like white, text it would also do the outline of the box too no nope, it didn't it just did the uh, inside so you see that's just for the number but they look better in black so i am going to no make sure what you're editing background green front black and then label will be the text for the box which this is labeled as O <laughs> for octave, you know, semitones and synths. 
because this is an oscillator. Now, one thing I noticed is I made a mistake in one of these. You see these um, selection boxes, the H radios, as they're called, that we've been using to select what waveform and so forth in these different um, modules. I looked at this one down here. I forgot to give it the front color of gray, the light gray. You see how the rest of them are like that? I obviously forgot to do this one. Oh, I can open it up and we'll fix that. The radio boxes also allow you to set their background color, their front color, and their label. And the front color should be this gray here. Go along with the rest of them that I made. So there you go. There's some simple things you can do to make a pure data patch look better. This is how we can make our synthesizer look better. I'm going to take a screenshot of this for the thumbnail. And um, that's basically it for this last episode of Series 1. We made ourselves a simple, basic two-oscillator synthesizer. Uh, with, um, you know, frequency modulation, amplitude modulation, a filter for each set of oscillators, and an envelope, ADSR envelope, and a mix between the two oscillators. That's good for Series 1. Series 2, as I say, it'll be a bit of an adventure. We're going to make something. But we'll start off with polyphony because a lot because it looks like, you know, a number of people are interested in seeing how do you do polyphony if you want to build a synthesizer that can play more than one note at a time. And we'll see how to do that in beginning in the next series. Thank you for joining me. And please like, subscribe, all those wonderful things to help keep this series on there and out there and uh, available for people who want to learn pure data or um, synthesis or both that's always a great thing to do all right take care